This is the Galaxy S6 Edge and I made a video a while ago where I used it as my only phone for a week. The one thing that annoyed me the most was its software. It was just terrible and I've read all your comments about installing a custom ROM for a better experience. So I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna find a custom ROM for this phone, flash it and again use it for a week with that ROM. But I'm also gonna discuss about why custom ROMs don't make sense anymore. Let's get to installing the ROM. So I'm here at XJ forums. It's one of the best places to find custom ROMs and I'm gonna search for the Galaxy S6 Edge. Okay, for some reason, there's a One UI ROM for this phone, but I don't want to do that because I do like stock Android a lot more. A few moments later. Okay, after some digging, I found an Android 13 ROM for the S6, which is great. There are a few issues, but that won't really affect me. So before I start installing the ROM, I need to flash TWRP, which is fairly straightforward with this phone. I can just use Odin and flash TWRP. I just need to put this phone into download mode connect it and it will hopefully do the job. Now I'm just gonna straight away wipe the phone and transfer the ROM. Now we get to the fun part, installing the ROM. That just takes a few clicks, it's very easy. I need to make sure I have gapps installed. It's a way to get Google Play services on custom ROMs. And there is a specific one made for the Galaxy S6 which works with Android 13. Now let's get to the fun part. Does the phone still work? It does and we are good to go. I'm gonna do the same setup I did in the Galaxy S6 video. It's gonna be easier this time around cause every app supports Android 13. So that won't really be an issue and i'll get back to you in a week it's been a week got a fresh cut and surprise surprise it was not that bad i'm just gonna talk about software performance and battery life because display design and cameras are gonna be the same as my last video first of all no bloatware. I am so happy about that because I'm getting a lot of storage back I could use for music or photos. I love stock Android. It's the reason why I chose a OnePlus 8 after using the iPhone 7. And using this phone reminded me of the good old days when OnePlus wasn't shoving down color OS. This ROM also makes the phone great for basic tasks. I had no trouble making calls, listening to music, texting or browsing the internet. The animations look so good on this phone thanks to the ROM. From unlocking to opening apps or even charging the phone. It's better than how it was on the stock ROM. Heck, very similar to One UI 6.1 on a Galaxy S23 Ultra. I did not expect this coming into making this video. I thought the phone is gonna struggle a lot because it was pretty old. And if it struggled on Android 7, what's gonna help it on Android 13? This just proves my point I made in the S6 video. Samsung's old software bogged down a lot of good phones. Now, it does miss out on a lot of features that were there on the stock ROM. For example, all those edge display features are gone. The heart rate sensor does doesn't work anymore. The camera is now just a basic app that captures images and videos. This is why I'm leaving out the camera part because it misses out on a lot of processing and the features of the stock ROM. But custom ROMs do have a leg up in customization. There's endless amount of tweaks you can go through to make the phone do whatever you want it to do. For example, I hit the network status bar because I constantly get full speeds everywhere and I've rarely had issues with signals. I changed the battery bar to be similar to the OnePlus One. I now have always on display with this phone which it never officially supports. Footed, or just a navigation which is useless because it has physical buttons but I'm so used to just a navigation on newer phones. There are endless ways to customize and I don't want to dive deeper into this because I've kept my setup pretty minimal. Now running a newer Android version gives this phone a leg up even over iPhones of its age like the iPhone 6s. I can install the latest version of apps something I can't say about the iPhone 6s in 2024 because for some reason it is losing app support even though it's just been two years since it stopped getting updates. On the Android side Android 6 from 2015 still has app support from the most popular apps and it's still getting new features like quick share something i can't say about ios because if your iphone or ipad doesn't get the latest update you can't even log into your apple id or even sync reminders or notes from an older version i faced this problem with my ipad which stopped getting updates last year but since the s6 is running a recent version of android thanks to this rom i get years worth of new features like material new theming notification history pass keys or new emojis but older iOS devices have a leg up in security. iOS 12, 15 and 16 still get security updates. The S6 stopped getting official security updates in 2018. This is a serious matter because I always avoid locking into my actual accounts on these older devices but sometimes I need to and in that case I would trust an iPhone over the S6 which right now with this custom ROM gets a recent security patch but that still doesn't help it because the phone is now rooted. It's not going to be as secure as it would have been because of that. Banking apps, 
streaming services or even some apps that have some kind of protection don't work anymore. You can bypass some of them by hiding the root status. For example, I had a problem with using Apple Music, but I can use it now because I hid the root status from it. But that still doesn't help apps that rely on Google's safety net like banking apps. This is the only serious limitation I've had so far using this custom ROM. But let's talk about performance. If I had to sum it up in one word, amazing. Just like a sub to this channel, can we please hit 10k by the end of this month? Just like I talked about in the software, the phone feels a lot more faster. Apps just open quickly, I can multitask without issues, and it's not magically a performance champ now. It is slow in some areas, but it's a big improvement over the stock ROM. The benchmark scores are higher, it performs faster than the iPhone 5 is now. Because of how good it is with the custom ROM, I would recommend this phone. But there are problems. The phone does bog down a lot once you have more than 4 apps open in the background. It only has 3 gigs of RAM, come on. Sometimes heavy apps do crash and the phone heats up quickly and I mean quickly. It gets so hot that it starts getting slow. It gives me flashbacks of the stock ROM. For some reason, I found the fingerprint scanner to be slower than the stock ROM. I don't know why. But I've only noticed slowdowns when I push the phone too much when I quickly multitask. Other than that, it's been great, just like the battery life. Any guesses on how long it lasts now? I got 3 hours of screen on time, which is impressive because I was struggling to get 2 hours on the stock ROM. Now, I feel it would have been better if I threw in a fresh battery, but this has to be the best battery life I've ever gotten with an old phone. But here's the deal, even though the phone looks like a good option now with this custom ROM, I wouldn't really recommend custom ROMs in the end of the day. The whole appeal of a custom ROM made a lot of sense in the early days of smartphones. Most of them shipped with horrible skins and only got updates for a year or two. Custom ROMs gave these older phones longer life and made them faster. Back then, there was an extensive community helping people to run these on their phones. Almost every phone back then had a bunch of custom ROMs. In fact, Xiaomi's first product was a custom ROM. But custom ROMs slowly started losing of the appeal they had. Phones started getting support for longer. Their software was getting very good to a point where there was no reason to install a custom ROM. But there was a bigger nail in the coffin. Phones started getting really complex. In fact, let's take the S6. The moment you root this phone, you will trip the knock security layer which disables most of the features on the stock ROM. And you will never get those features back even if you unroot the phone because you trip a hardware fuse. And remember how I had troubles using banking apps? There are ways to bypass it but it has gotten increasingly difficult over the years. Also, over the last few years, cameras on phones started getting really good but they all relied on post-processing tricks and they were proprietary. There was no easy way to get the same camera experience on a custom ROM. There are some exceptions. Some phones do get their stock ROM camera experience with custom ROMs. About two years ago, I installed the Pixel Experience ROM on my OnePlus 8 and that ROM did support the stock OnePlus camera app but it did not work properly. Speaking of OnePlus, they used to be so popular in the custom ROM space. They made it so easy for developers to make ROMs but lately, they don't seem to care. And in the end, it's just a small minority of people who really care about custom ROMs. There isn't an incentive for a lot of these developers to put in the work to make something good. Stock ROMs like One UI have gotten really good nowadays and there aren't any benefits with installing custom ROMs. I'm not saying custom ROMs are dead but it's not as appealing as it was 7 to 8 years ago. Watch this video to find out why I stopped using the Apple Watch.